What up YouTube, Patrick here. And today I wanna to talk about solving the double spin problem and how Bitcoin does it versus how Nano does it. Because this was brought up in a recent Keyword Crypto podcast with Mario, Michael, and JJ, which was a great episode, by the way, pretty funny and also informative. So I'm gonna do my best to try and address some of the issues that were brought up. So first of all, here's my attempt at a 30 second answer without too much depth, but it will leave a lot lacking and I'll try to dive into the details in the rest of the slides. Bitcoin uses proof of work as its consensus mechanism. That's how it deconflicts forks between blocks, right? It requires time and computational resources to prove which block is real. The longest and heaviest blockchain is the one that wins. Nano uses open representative voting, which operates on a per transaction basis to maintain consensus. So when a transaction gets broadcast out, the representatives see that transaction and then respond with their vote weight which is just the percentage of nano delegated to them. Your own node sees all those votes coming in, right, from all the different representatives. And once that transaction has enough votes, your node considers that transaction confirmed. At a very basic level, that's proof of work versus open representative voting. All right, so let's dive into more detail. First, Bitcoin and proof of work. So Bitcoin is a blockchain, right? A block is a group of transactions. Alice paying Charlie, Charlie paying you, so on and so forth. There's a list of transactions here. All this together, this box here, is a block. Once you have this data compiled, you can run it through a, a one-way math algorithm, a hashing function, that spits out a hash, right? So with this given input data, you're going to get a series of letters and numbers that come back and says, here's my hash for that data. That hash is what's taken into the next block, and so on and so forth. And that's how you get the chain piece, right? Here's your block chain. The problem is that the hash and the list of transactions here by themselves is not enough to solve the double spin problem. Because imagine Alice being a malicious actor. She pays Charlie 50 uh, Bitcoin and sends him that block, right? But then in another block that's also otherwise valid, she sends, she makes no transactions. So she still has 50 Bitcoin, right? Which one wins? That's the issue. That's the double spin problem. And that's where proof of work comes into play. Proof of work is a mathematical puzzle, right? A guessing game where the first person that solves the puzzle wins and they have a right, according to the protocol, to attach their block to the rest of the blockchain, right? And when you have two parallel blockchains, which might have valid transactions in both of them, the way you decide which one is true is the one that has the longest and heaviest proof of work. Right, So the one that gets extended the most, has the most proof of work, that's considered the valid chain and follows all the other protocol rules. Right, You can't overspin. Like if you have zero Bitcoin and you try to send 50 Bitcoin, the nodes aren't going to accept that transaction even if your proof of work is valid. So you need to follow all the protocol rules and have a valid proof of work. Of course, this is connected to things like 51% attacks where if Alice happened to have more than 50% of the hash rate on the network, she would always be able to produce a longer chain, right? She could basically censor transactions. Uh, she could just keep spitting out empty blocks. And because she has the most proof of work, she would be winning that. Of course, there's other aspects of game theory in the Bitcoin protocol and, and whatnot that address that, but realize that these concepts are connected. So Nano is quite different. And again, I'm gonna split it, split it into two pieces, the data structure and then the consensus mechanism, but they're connected and they, they both influence and impact each other. So instead of one blockchain, remember Bitcoin, here, here we have the blockchain, one block connected to the next block, connected to a next block with all these individual transactions. Instead of that, Nano uses a block lattice. So each of these lines here is a separate account that only the owner can modify. That's one of the protocol rules. You have to sign a transaction. The only person who can sign a transaction legitimately is the one who owns the key, right? So each of these lines is its own account. And transactions are processed on an individual per transaction basis, not on a block group of transactions individually. So imagine here we have, oh, let me go back, my mouse disappeared. Imagine here we have the Genesis account in the Genesis block. This block says there's 100 nano in existence, and that's my balance. That account can then make a send transaction, which changes its balance to, to, let's say if they're sending 10 nano, their balance is now 90. So this, this block says, my account name is this, my balance is 90, my representative is XYZ, and I sent 
10 nano to this destination account. This open, uh, open block, which is just another type of receive block, the green blocks here are receive blocks, the O's are opens, and the reds are send. So this open block is signed by the person with that account's private key, and once they've signed that transaction and opened or received the transaction, their balance is now 10, right, in this scenario. So they can now make a send transaction to other people based on this balance. So if this person now sends five, they update their balance to, oh, my balance is five, this guy has five, and so on and so forth, right? So that's the ledger. What does that buy versus Bitcoin's blockchain? Well, transactions can now be processed individually and asynchronously. You don't have to wait every 10 minutes for a block that compiles all the transactions. You can, as soon as a transaction is sent, the network can process it and continue on its merry way. The other thing it buys us is asynchronous conflict resolution. So if I'm sending, if I'm this Genesis account and I'm sending completely valid transactions, the network can keep processing those even if this guy over here is sending fork transactions. Like if this block, this red block here, he's sending here, but he's also trying to send it to some other guy up here, the network can take its time to resolve that issue without impacting anyone else on the network. And here on the right is a different kind of visualization of the same block lattice. Maybe some people will find this one easier to understand. Instead of horizontal accounts, each vertical column here is a different account. So here you have the Genesis account with its account chain, its own blockchain. Here you have account B with its own blockchain, so on and so forth. And you can see how all the transactions are connected. So if this guy makes a send, he fills out the link field with account A as his destination, and he's updated his balance, maybe he's updated his representative, his full and complete current account state is captured in each transaction. So once this transaction here, this latest send is confirmed, you can kind of discard all the previous ones because this one says, oh, my balance is now 10, my representative is myself or Binance or whatever other account you want, and you're good to go, right? So that's the ledger design. Let's talk about open representative voting and the double spin solution in Nano. I'm gonna use this animation by Lucas Santos because it's really good and we'll walk through it here. So here we have a wallet sending a Nano transaction. A wallet manages your keys, your seed, right? Uh, and it, it communicates with a Nano node, which is just a server running the Nano software somewhere, typically. Could be a laptop or whatever, but it's running the Nano software and there's a bunch of these. Notice that all of these have different vote weights. This guy has 40% of the vote weight, 30%, 0% here, so on and so forth. A nano vote weight is determined by the amount of nano you own and who's delegating to you. So if I have 100 nano, that could be my vote weight, but then say you also have 100 nano and delegate it to me, now I have 200 nano to vote with. Your, your nano isn't locked up or anything, you can still use it. But as long as it's in your account and you have me set as your representative, I now have 200 vote weight in this case. So anyways, from the perspective of this animation, we have the different representatives with their vote weight percentages here. Your wallet communicates with a node and now the node is gonna broadcast your transaction and its vote. In this case, its vote is zero because it has no vote weight, but let's see what happens. So notice this nearest node with 20% already has the, the green block the transaction, and it's going to vote for it because it follows all the protocol rules, it hasn't seen any double spans, it seems valid. So now this guy is gonna send back its vote to this guy and all the other nodes and say, my 20% can go for this transaction. All the nodes are doing this at the same time. Uh, I guess not exactly the same time because they receive the transaction at different times, but, but remember this is a, a normal scenario, no double spins, everything seems to be legit, right? easy enough, the transaction got confirmed as soon as this node saw that the transaction had more than 50% vote weight. Notice that every node individually is confirming that transaction for itself. So this node saw enough votes from enough nodes that it's confident to confirm it. And you can set your own threshold, but default is greater than 50% vote weight and 50% higher than any competing transaction. So now let's get into a simple fork scenario. In this case, we've already sent one transaction, right? and it's confirmed everywhere, but this guy's a bad guy, an attacker, and he's gonna to try to send another transaction that spends the money to himself, for example, and not the other guy. Easy enough, right? This 40% vote weight guy sees green transaction is already in my 
ledger, it's already confirmed. So I'm going to ignore this guy, basically. But, but I'm going to send out my vote to all the representatives and my 40% just to confirm for them that I have voted for a green guy. Because maybe these guys aren't confirmed yet. In this case, they are. But So everything is confirmed. No issues. That double spend doesn't occur. Okay, now let's look at a more complex fork. So we have an attacker sending one transaction yellow to this one node, but sending another competing transaction green to this 0% vote weight node. What happens? Well, so yellow sees that transaction as 40% vote weight. So far, it hasn't seen anything else, so it's going to send out its vote, right? 40% vote weight goes to everyone for transaction yellow. Likewise, representative 0 here is going to send out its 0% vote weight for green transaction because it hasn't seen anything else. So in this case, 20 now, the only transaction he's seen is green. And so that's what he's voting for at this point in time. However, notice that the vote from 40 is also coming to him. And one of the protocol rules is that nodes change their vote to the transaction with the most vote weight. So once 20 sees this 40% vote come in, he's going to change his vote to transaction yellow. Boom, you see this? He added his vote to the 40%, so now it has 60%. And in this case, he would consider that transaction confirmed because it's 50% vote weight more than any fork at this point in time. But all these nodes are individually doing this at the same time. But eventually with enough time and votes flying back and forth, the network converges on a solution and we're good to go. The fork is resolved. Boom, there it is. But remember, one of the key benefits of Nano's consensus mechanism and, and ledger data structure is that forks happen on a per transaction basis. So this guy, for his account, he has delayed confirmations for his own account because he's the one sending forks. But for me sending to you, and we're both legitimate, our transactions can be sent at the same time, uh, confirmed quickly, less than a second typically, and we're on our merry, merry way, right? So the pain is felt by the bad guy, which is a pretty cool side effect of the combination of the block lattice data structure, remember from the previous slide, and this open representative voting mechanism. Finally, one of the other points that Mario made in the keyword crypto podcast was that Nano's open representative voting consensus mechanism, its double spending solution seems to be similar to proof of stake. And he's right, it is a variant of proof of stake, but it has some major differences that make it function very differently. Uh, one of the big ones being that, that ledger data structure and that protocol rule saying that every account has its own transaction that only the owner can modify, right? But let's, let's walk through these points. Uh, and this is something that I've submitted to the New Living White Paper, so hopefully that gets released soon, uh, along with a way more detail for anyone who wants to dive in. That was something also described by Michael and Mario on the podcast, that there's just not enough good, easily accessible information that describes the details of what Nano is doing. So I'm working on fixing that, uh, working with a lot of awesome folks on GitHub. So check that out if you want. Anyways, let's walk through, through this list I put together. So there's one, there's not a monolithic blockchain. We kind of talked about that. And it doesn't require leader set selection to extend. So in proof of work or traditional proof of stake, you have one blockchain, right? Uh, with blocks, and a leader is selected to extend that blockchain, either the winning miner, the guy who solves the proof-of-work puzzle first, or uh, the random selection based on vote weight for proof-of-stake, and that lead, that chosen leader, that one entity, is the one extending the blockchain and providing the source of truth for the network for that point in time, right? Nano isn't that same way. You individually, your own node, is making the determination of whether or not a transaction is confirmed. Based on the votes from the representatives in the network, yes, but there's no single leader that's saying this transaction is valid, that transaction is not valid, so on and so forth. You make that determination. In Nano, the representatives, and this is connected to that, to that first point, in Nano, representatives aren't creating blocks, groups of transactions that then they broadcast to everyone. They can produce their own transactions just like everyone else, but it's an individual asynchronous transaction uh, that they can only modify their own account chain, which is the next point. Uh, each Nano account has its own blockchain that only the owner can modify. So even with 50% vote weight, a representative can't mess with my chain because they can't sign my chain. Uh, they would essentially be 
creating their own fork uh, if they had that much vote weight and tried to do that. Their own fork of the whole network at that point, right? Because they're running their own protocol rules. It's like Nano and Banano. They have different rules. Again, we've covered this. In Nano, a block is a single transaction, not a group of transactions. In Bitcoin or traditional proof of stake, a block is a group of transactions that and forks happen at the block level versus the individual transaction level. Uh, in Nano, users can change their vote to anyone they want at any time. There's no limits on that. Anyone can be a representative. You can run up your own node, and now you're your own representative. Uh, one note on this point, though, there, Nano does have the concept of principal representatives, where you need 0.1% 0, 0 of total online vote weight to have your vote rebroadcast. Otherwise, there would be too much um, network traffic if every single node is uh, sending votes to every other node for every single transaction. That would be exponential network bandwidth usage. They have no special permissions, right? They, they're not extending the blockchain. They can't do anything special. They just get their votes rebroadcast so that everyone can see the votes and come to consensus quickly. Representatives do not earn transaction fees. This is a big one because even with proof of stake or uh, proof of work, miners and stakers have an incentive to keep acquiring more and more vote weight because they want to make more money, right? Economies of scale, or the more stake you have, the more money you earn. So if you can have as much stake as possible, then you earn more money, which ironically leads the network to kind of trend towards centralization over time. And Nano, there's no point. You get no benefits out of having more vote weight. So unless you're actually using the network, why acquire vote weight? Doesn't matter. And then finally, representatives cannot reverse transactions that you have confirmed even with greater than 50% vote weight. Uh, remember in Bitcoin, if you have greater than 50% hash rate, every node following the rules would change their vote weight to that new longest chain. If, if Alice as an attacker had greater than 50% hash rate and she pushed out a new chain, then Bitcoin nodes on the network would change their blockchain there's transactions to that new, longer, heavier chain. That's by design, right? In Nano, even if you got 50% vote weight, you can't reverse my transaction because once I have seen a transaction and saw that it was confirmed, it had greater than 50% vote weight versus any other uh, fork or double spend or anything, it marks that transaction as irreversible. So even if then at that point you send me a, a new transaction that says, oh, I have 60% vote weight, that says there's this other transaction, doesn't matter. I've cemented my transaction. So that means that the network as a whole, all the honest participants are converging on the same result. That's how Nano solves the Byzantine uh, general problem. That's how Nano is Byzantine fault tolerant. So as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. Peace.